Hello my friends, welcome back to another video in the truth series. It's been a while since I've done one of these and I think it's about time. I've been thinking about this video for a very long time and how I wanted to present it, uh, but I feel like it's important. The more I meet larger YouTubers and get to know them a little bit better and smaller YouTubers and their struggles, I'm wondering, are there any common threads in these people, in their videos, in who they are that make them the ones that are at the top and people like me not at the top so I'm about to tell you all about what I figured out and my opinions right about now So I want to preface this by saying this is not a hater video. It's not made out of jealousy. It's not, I'm, I'm perfectly okay with my station on YouTube at 77,000 subscribers. I love my channel. I love my subscribers. I am very happy and content with where I am. So just so you know, but if you're easily offended by opinions that everybody has a right to have, then this may not be the video for you because I'm gonna be sharing my opinions. Just because it's my opinion doesn't mean that your opinion is wrong if you disagree with me. I respect yours and all I ask is that you respect mine. Where I started this was on my Facebook group. I have a Facebook group. It's got about 25, 27,000 members on my Facebook group. It's just What's Up and Makeup. If you search for it, you can find it there or you can just do group slash What's Up and Makeup on Facebook to find it. So I asked them, I said, you know, when you think of the top influencers on YouTube or Instagram or whatever, who do you think of? Not necessarily your favorite people, but the people that are at the top of the food chain, who do you think of? So take a second and think about who you think of as the top of the food chain right now in YouTube beauty. So you're probably imagining some people, now imagine their videos and what their videos look like. So, and now I'm gonna tell you what my group said as far as the top people. So what I did was I took the 157 comments or whatever, actually I think I only made it to like 140 before I was like, okay, I can't do this anymore, I have to stop because <laughs> I had to film. But I took their comments and I gave a tally mark as people were mentioned. So I'll give you the top 10. All right, top 10. Number 10, people that were mentioned when I asked that question was Luster Lux. Then Desi Perkins was number nine. Number eight was Wayne Goss. Number seven was Manny MUA. Six, Laura Lee. Five, Jeffree Star. Four, Nikki Tutorials. Three, Kathleen Lights. Two, Tati. And number one, Jacqueline Hill. Now this is coming off her palette release, so I think everybody's got Jacqueline Hill on the brain, so I don't know if a month ago if Jacqueline Hill would have been the most mentioned. Her and Tati were like neck and neck as far as the top. And then there's quite a big space between her and Kathleen, Nikki, and Jeffrey. So I thought that was really, really interesting. I have a theory. And my theory is that there are five things that you need in order to be one of the top beauty influencers on the platform. So the first one is time. You have to have a lot of time. You have to be able to spread yourself out on multiple platforms. You have to upload regularly. You have to have the time to invest in getting your content out there for an audience. I know at least the top seven, Jacqueline, Tati, Kathleen, Nikki, Jeffrey, Laura, Manny, I know that they put out a ton of content, and not just on YouTube, but everywhere. They're constantly on their Snapchats, Instagram, Twitters. They are everywhere all the time and they invest a lot of time along with making the videos, filming the videos. I think that they all edit their own videos. I don't know that for a fact. Uh, it seems that they all edit their videos. I would imagine that Jeffrey doesn't edit all of his videos because some of them are super, super pro. Uh, but overall, they're spending a lot of time. If you have kids, if you have a demanding job, you are at a disadvantage to being one of the biggest YouTubers on the platform. The second one is money. You have got to have money if you are one of the people that are going to be at the top. Take a look at a screenshot of each of some of the top people mentioned by my Facebook community. You'll notice something about the way their videos look. They are all extremely high quality. They have beautiful lighting, beautiful backgrounds. They, they, have, they have money. They have money in order to invest in this kind of setup. If your setup is not beautiful with the lights, 
you ha you're at a disadvantage and lights and camera equipment and lenses are expensive. And in the beginning, you're gonna have to buy a lot of products because you're not getting products sent to you. So money, you're gonna need money there as well. So if you don't have a lot of money, you're at a disadvantage. The number three thing is talent. You have to have talent. And there's lots of ways people can have talent. And the more of these talents you have, the better your chances of being a top influencer. Of course, makeup skills. Huge, huge, huge deal. Having your makeup skills on point and showing that in every video. Having a talent in public speaking, to being able to speak to an audience, speaking to a camera like you're talking to that person right there. Having that is a talent. Of course, these things can be developed over time, but some people are more naturally inclined toward these things than others. Having a presence on camera, if you'll notice these people, they all have a presence, they all have a personality. I mean, Jaclyn Hill, how much personality? I mean, so much personality. Manny, Jeffrey, I mean, they all have this personality that some people will gravitate to. More than ever on YouTube, being a camera personality is important for success. I started my first YouTube channel, Gen Love 36 back in 2006. You didn't really necessarily need to have a whole lot of personality to be one of the top influencers. You just had to be interesting in one way or another. One of the biggest YouTubers back then was a guy named Geriatric I forget his numbers, he passed away a couple of years ago, but he told war stories. He didn't have a whole lot of personality, but he was one of the top YouTubers on the platform because he told such good stories and there was nowhere else where you could get stories that were raw from the war field unless you had a grandpa yourself. So he was like everybody's grandpa and he was the only guy like that on the platform and everybody loved him. So my point is is that now I don't think he would have as big of an audience at this point. The people on YouTube were competing with Netflix and Hulu, you know, and and your cable television. So if people don't have that television presence, they're at a disadvantage. And next up is a controversial one, and it's beauty. You gotta be good looking, okay? I'm, I'm sorry to say it. I know people don't wanna say it, but it's true. If you are a beautiful person, I'm not talking about good looking, I'm talking about beautiful. I'm talking about like perfect looking. You have a significant advantage over everybody else in this YouTube beauty thing. People will subscribe just because people are beautiful. And, and I, I doubt that anybody would disagree with me. I'm sure there's gonna be people that disagree with me. But let me get this straight. You don't have to be beautiful in order to be successful, but it gives you a big advantage. I think that people, in my opinion, weigh heavier on whether someone's beautiful or not than if they have personality and are giving enough valuable information. You can have someone who's perfect looking, but is boring as all get up, and they will have way more subscribers than someone that's super interesting and not perfect looking. That's what my observation has been. Feel free to disagree with me if you feel like I'm wrong. But before you click away, before you hit that thumbs down button, Emotional beauty, I feel like, also is a factor. When people feel like you are a good person, that you're trustworthy, that you're kind, but now, think about the people I mentioned. Some of these people have reputations for not being trustworthy, for not being honest, for not being kind. Because none of these are an absolute. You don't have to have all of them, but the more you have, the better your chances are. So emotional beauty, physical beauty will get you right up there. If you don't have those, you're at a disadvantage. The last one, the fifth one, is connection. So having connections, first of all, first and foremost, with your audience. For all Jeffree Star gets knocked, his subscribers are loyal as all get up. And anybody that disagrees with that, I want you to look at the Jeffree Star and Tati collab and look at Jeffree's comments underneath his video collab with Tati, how much love he got. Then you go and look at Tati's video and Tati got so much stinking hate on that video. Jeffree's fans are loyal. 
They love him because he has made the connection with them. They can relate to him on one way or another. He Snapchats all the time, talks to them like they're his best friend, invites them into his home. He, he makes you feel like you're special sitting there with him. He tells you all the time how much he loves you and appreciates you. A lot of people are drawn into that. If you look at Manny's Snapchat, if you look at Laura's Snapchat, it's like hanging out with the best friend. Friends, making that connection, able to make that personal connection with your audience, I feel like is a huge advantage. On the other side, making connections and positive relationships with, with brands is also very, very important so that they send you stuff. And also making relationship with other YouTubers. We've got the Cool Kids crew. We've got Jeffrey, Laura, and Manny. I mean, they collab with each other and they grow. When Tati collabed with Jeffrey, she got over 8,000 subscribers in a few hours. In a few hours. In less than a day, she got over 8,000 subscribers. That's along with all the people who are in her comments swearing they were unsubscribing. She still gained over 8,000 subscribers. So it, I don't know how many the title ended at. That was when I checked. It was like 8,000 subscribers. He didn't gain a whole lot, but she gained a lot of subscribers because having friends that are also really big, that makes a huge difference. It does. If you look at Jaclyn Hill's launch party for her palette, look at all the people who were there. All of the people who were there were mentioned in one way or another. Speaking of that, other people that were mentioned, Jackie Ina, Patrick Starr, Stephanie Nicole actually got a lot of comments. Emily Noel 83 got mentioned quite a lot. Uh, Candy Johnson, Carly Bible, Crispy, James Charles, Kristen Dominique, Casey Holmes, Nicole Guerrero. They all kind of fall into this with the exception of Emily Noel 83 and Stephanie Nicole, where I feel like they are a different breed. But you notice, I don't know how many subscribers Stephanie Nicole has, but I'm pretty sure it's under 500,000. And Emily Noel only has 890,000, which only 890,000. But still, they're different than all these other people. Would you agree that they're, they're a different category if you've watched their videos? Neither of them have all of the glitz and the glamour and the perfectness, but they're so trusted and loved by the people that watch them, and I think that's what boosts them up higher. Speaking of this, I do wanna talk about two other categories that I feel make you at a disadvantage, and I mean this with the most respect, and this is only out of observation. I wish it wasn't like this, but this is out of observation. You notice that none of the people that were mentioned were black. I don't know why. I don't have theories as to why. I don't want to speculate as to why, but there's no reason to me why Jackie Ina shouldn't be bigger than she is. Jackie only has 1.4 million subscribers. I don't, I feel like she should be just as big, if not bigger than Manny and Laura and Jeffrey. Her videos to me are just as good as everybody else that is, has two and three and four times as many subscribers as she has. And I don't know, is it because she's black that she doesn't have as many? And you've got Manny and Kathleen who are Hispanic, but this is a bunch of white people. And is that, a, is that a statement to our society? It, what is this? What, uh, that's my, it's more of a question than anything, than a statement. It's my observations along with a question. The other piece is, if you look how old these people are, they're all like 30 and under. I feel like people that are older are more likely to watch younger people than younger people are willing to watch people that are older. I would love to know what you think. So where does that leave people who don't have a lot of money, people who have full-time jobs, people who may not be makeup artist trained, people who aren't physically beautiful, people who don't have connections with brands, where does that leave everybody? Well, it leaves us with the people that enjoy our videos. You know, I mean, I, I don't think that you need to have 4 million subscribers in order to cons consider yourself a valid person on this platform. I know that a lot of people in Ipsy OS get down and I've seen them get hard on themselves about why am I not growing? Why am I not growing? And it's okay to just have your base love you. 
You know, I know the people that watch my videos, that watch What's Up in Makeup, that watch the Makeup Minute, that watch my reviews, that watch my, you know, my monthly countdown. Some people really love those videos. Does it matter how many people there are that love them? If there is a group of people that really truly in their heart appreciate you, should it matter? That's the question. Should we be putting these people up on a pedestal? Should we be saying they're better than everybody else because they have a bigger number? I'm not saying they're asking to be put up on a pedestal, but I think that we do as, as a community. I think we put these people up on a pedestal because of their numbers. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm really curious to hear your thoughts in the comments below and mad love to you. I love you dearly and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Mad love. Bye.